Have you ever been to a swamp or a bayou? How about sugarcane fields or other farms? If you have, did you feel safe there? And if you haven't, would you? For people growing up in Louisiana, these types of places aren't uncommon. They can easily be the scene of a relaxing picnic spent staring up at the sky or a favorite spot for children to run and play. But some people swear by avoiding them. They say they sense a danger in them that most people just don't. And while they might seem paranoid, they're actually right. You see, Louisiana's woods and wetlands are bright and lively during the day, and their beauty really is second to none. Running through a sugarcane field with friends till you get lost is otherworldly, especially with the cool breeze blowing over you. I'd say everyone who can experience these things should do so at least once in their lives. Once the sun goes down, though, that's a different story. The reason you don't want to go to the sugarcane fields at night is simple. If you do, you might meet the Rougarou. I know most people haven't heard of the Rougarou, so let me explain him in a way that properly conveys the utter terror you should feel at the thought of meeting him. He's a monster in every sense of the word, born of a vindictive priestess's voodoo ritual and cursed to be a slave to demonic passions for 101 days or until he can pass his curse off to whichever poor soul is unlucky enough to cross his path. He's a bit like what you'd call a werewolf, but far worse. Whereas werewolves transform during the full moon, the Rougarou chooses to transform, both to and from his accursed state and he can do so at any time during the night. When he transforms, his size doubles and triples. With his size comes incredible strength, enough to send a man flying with one uncaring blow. Thick black claws shoot out from his hands to cut and tear away at flesh and bone, and his teeth become like pikes ready to sink into the deepest sinews of his victims. His jaw is like iron. When he bites, he won't let go no matter what type of fight you put up. His skin thickens and darkens until it's as tough as a bear's, and from every corner of his body shoots a thick white fur, ghostly in color an omen that taunts whoever sees it. His nose and eyes are black as night, even to the sclera and all around them, a contrast which makes his white as snow teeth all the more terrifying when he lunges at you in night's total darkness. His speed is ungodly, making even the most experienced hunter fumble like a child, so as soon as you see him, you're already dead. Unlike werewolves, the Rougarou can stand and run on two legs and has five fingers and toes on each hand and foot. And unlike werewolves, who lose their minds and intelligence, the Rougarou retains his, at least partially, which is why he's known to transform back into a human to lure in victims at night. When he bites you, there are two possibilities. Either he kills you and eats you, not necessarily in that order, or he lets you live to take on his curse. Either way, your life as you know it is over. He may seem insurmountable, and he is. Only a fool would try to meet the Rougarou. But, though he can scarce be killed, he can be avoided. The same transformation that gives him his inhuman strength, speed, and durability limits his mind. His bloodlust, demonic in nature and more ravenous than any wolves, is evidence of this. The Rougarou's only glaring weakness is his inability to count past 12. Groups of objects, number 13 or more, confuse the Rougarou who, due to his animalistic compulsions, will attempt to count them until something breaks his focus, such as the sunrise which he fears. If you do manage to trap the Rougarou in such a trap, stay inside and you'll be safe for the night. When the sun comes up, he'll flee, his cover gone. Whatever you do, don't attempt to kill him in his days. If any noise breaks the creature's concentration, he'll return his focus to you and with it his speed and ferocity, at which point it's a matter of whether you can shoot him dead before he tears you apart. Some have succeeded in doing so. Many, many others have not. As a human, the Rougarou's weaknesses are more useful. From the second he's cursed, the Rougarou develops a craving for raw meat, a craving which ultimately culminates in him biting human flesh, the satanic deed that consummates his curse and completes his transformation. While in human form, the Rougarou will usually be reclusive, sneaking off to eat his raw meals alone and hiding his evil even from his family. He uses this seclusion to his advantage, picking solitary targets for whose deaths he knows he won't be blamed. As they say in Louisiana, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, so if you see someone being antisocial or eating raw meat, especially if it happens all of a sudden, you should avoid them. And if anyone ever tries to get you to go to the fields or the woods or the swamp with them alone at night, never do it. If you suspect someone of being a Rougarou, don't let them know, otherwise you could find yourself in danger. Just warn your family and loved ones and give them the same advice I've given you. Fortify your house with groups of 13 or more items and get a gun, but pray you'll never have to use it. Make sure to get a large enough round to kill him in one shot. Something like a 30 6 a 12-gauge, or a 44 Magnum ought to do. When you kill a Rougarou, its body will stay in its grotesque form, meaning no one will accuse you of murder. This is one of two ways to get rid of a Rougarou. Admittedly, it's the rarest way. The more common way is to outlast the creature. The Rougarou can get rid of its curse by biting another person without killing them, something its bloodlust makes hard to do. 
However, if 101 days go by and the Ruguru has neither died nor passed on its curse, the curse will be lifted and humanity will return to the beast. His cravings for flesh will disappear and his scheming mind will scheme no more. Still, scars will remain. The Ruguru may never be able to function in society again, and few people will trust him if they have suspicions. If you do manage to kill a Ruguru who bites you before they die, the curse passes on to you. At this point, their body will revert to human form and the 101 day cycle will begin anew. So there you have it. While the woods and wetlands of Louisiana might be beautiful and serene in the daytime, they're the last place you want to be at night. Make sure to stay far away from them, lest you meet the Ruguru and meet your end.